Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin and in today's video, I'll be giving you guys my advices as well as tips on how to have an easier time when trying to tackle on this brand new content. Horrific Visions is a new type of content that's introduced to World of Warcraft that takes advantage of challenging content like the Mage Tower from Legion, but also allows it group capability, which can be done as solo or with five people. While baseline not the most challenging content of the 8.3, it can ramp up pretty high and it's very integral to keep up with visions in patch 8.3 so you can upgrade your legendary cloak. Failing to complete a vision means you don't get to upgrade your cloak and that sounds like a bad time. So this video aims to try to reduce the amount of bad time you'll have with these visions. So I wanted to test out visions on a brand new character, a spanking brand new character that I just got boosted to 120. It gives you a decent amount of item level at the very beginning. I got my boost originally from Shadowlands, but I felt like it was appropriate to dive on that character with very little gear, very little experience at the spec and class that I'm playing and try to see how well can I do. The purpose is to see how visions can be difficult for let's say a new player, a player with very little gear and to see how it compares from my main so I can make better advices for you guys whether you're someone who's just starting in the game, got very low item level but wants to get into the content or you're someone who has been playing the game for a while and has decent gear. So let's get into some tips. Tip number one, don't ever be afraid of using consumables. There's going to be a, a variety of various consumables that you'll be able to use in Horrific Visions. One of them are going to be recipes for various types of food, like baked Voidfin, Dubious Delight, Ghastly Goulash, and Grilled Nasher, which all give you some sort of a buff that you might find useful within Horrific Visions. And then there's a big one called Kebab. If you spend at least 10 seconds eating, instantly restores 100 sanity. Visions don't really sound like some part of content that you would feel like you would need to load up, like raids or dungeons or PvP. However, if you take visions seriously, like one would with raids, dungeons or PvP, then you'll actually have an easier time. If you're not someone who wants to spend that much gold on all these extra consumables, think of it this way. Just do a couple of world quests, do a couple of objectives, maybe finish an emissary and get some gold, and use that gold to make your time within visions easier. I feel like that's probably the best way of approaching it, and those items are definitely going to help you across when it comes to finishing and surviving harder visions. Second tip is pay attention and absorb your environment. Treat horrific visions like a dungeon or a raid. Your first time inside of a dungeon or raid, usually you're just wide-eyed. You're trying to absorb as much information as possible. What does the boss do? What is this explosive area? Should I get out of the fire? Should I stand in the fire? Little things like that. Every single mob, as well as a mini boss, any elite mobs within visions have their own mechanics. And some of them have very easy ways of dealing with. Some of them are casters that need to be interrupted, while others have casts that are not really worth it. Some can be stunned on cast, some can be stunned on ability usages, some can be popped defenses for, while other mobs are simply outranged or line of sighted. There's a lot of different tools you can use in order to deal with a variety of different enemies, but paying attention to what they do and trying to remember that knowledge for the next time you go into a vision will make it a lot easier for you to figure out exactly what's going on. Another tip that kind of goes with it is try to see how far you can get into horrific visions. For the first five upgrades of your cloak, all you need to do is go kill Thrall or kill Alaria, which are going to be the main bosses that you have to finish off before you end with the vision. And that all sounds really easy and really simple. However, you do want to see how far can your character go before you go finish off the final boss. So right now on my monk, I decided to test the waters. How far can I go? Can I get onto the second boss? Can I get to the second objective? How far can I go before I need to replenish my sanity? In a sense, it's like gathering reconnaissance for future missions, because eventually you will have to spread further and then further into horrific visions if you want to upgrade your legendary cloak. So getting some information early, seeing just how far your character can go, will give you at least a little bit of an idea of how you should plan for these visions. But it's also important to know just how difficult those zones may be. And since you are exploring, you're not really committing to that area, make sure you have a plan B to get out so you can go finish the horrific vision before you lose sanity or health. Another tip, if you do go and explore other zones and kill other mini bosses within Horrific Visions, the final boss, Thrall or Alaria, are going to get one of their mechanics. 
As of right now, we don't have the full guide on what abilities and what fights are going to be present in Horrific Visions. The patch basically just started. But off the bat, I was able to explore an extra zone on my monk, and I was able to successfully kill the boss. But when I returned to Thrall, I noticed that he had an extra mechanic. Normally Thrall does two abilities, one of them creates two zones, you can only stand on one of them at a time, and he'll either have you zone out to the outer ring or the inner part of the arena. Second is going to be a slam, that's just a frontal, but then he gets an extra ability. For the mini boss that I decided to explore and try to see if I can finish him off, I decided to travel into the dregs. So when you enter Orgrimmar, take a right, and it'll be the first zone you would get to. And the boss at the end of that instance does a couple different abilities. One of them is a knock up with a stun, which is very annoying and challenging to deal with. I still cannot figure out how to dodge it or maybe how to avoid it. But now Thrall will also put on a shield on himself and start a cast of a powerful ability. If you can't break that shield, then you're going to take some sanity and health damage. So then the idea becomes, okay, if I end up killing that boss, then I need to make sure to save certain abilities that would otherwise do more damage in order to break through that shield. However, I'm playing my monk and I'm trying to maximize my damage output, so since I don't have any gear, for the most part I just have to embrace the fact that I'm just going to get hit by the enemy. So. I need to have karma, I need to have maybe some sort of healing, uh, maybe if I can save up Fist of Fury and a couple of different cooldowns together to break through shield, that can help, but just be aware of the different mechanics, try to absorb them as best as you can, try to pay attention to what's happening, because the more you pay attention, the easier these visions will get. Another tip is figure out if you want to do the solo or with other people. Now there's positives and negatives to both. For example, playing with other people, if you go down, whether you lose your health or your sanity, your allies can revive you. If you have a difficulty managing CC on multiple mobs, bringing extra allies with CC will make focusing down a single enemy far easier. As well as dealing with boss mechanics could be easier with two people, let's say one of them is a tank or a healer, you have a variety of different roles and toolkits that all the variety of different classes and specs bring that you can utilize within these visions. However, the more allies you bring into visions, the stronger the enemies become. Enemies tend to scale with the more players are inside these visions. So if let's say you have a bunch of friends, but none of you guys really have good gear, that means all the bosses are simply going to be more of a time sink and just take more abilities to go down. They don't get it really any harder, they just take really much longer to kill. And time is everything when it comes to completing these horrific visions. You don't have an infinite amount of sanity. Speaking about sanity, as well as various upgrades you get for horrific visions, they are reduced if you are with other people. So that's kind of how Blizzard tried to balance horrific visions. And there might be a specific proper number of people you should have the maximum where you can get the most amount of benefits from horrific visions, but also the most amount of benefits from the types of players and classes that you're playing with. So there's positives and negatives when it comes to vision, but the most important part is to get comfortable with them. Comfortable with running them and if you're able to do them solo, because certain bosses and certain mechanics might be even easier solo. If you have been paying attention to what you need to watch out for, what can be avoided, and if you're able to successfully avoid it, then sometimes running solo might honestly be easier. But if you are a little bit sloppy and you don't really pay attention nearly as much, Playing with other people can be definitely a lot less punishing, especially if those people have really good gear. Finally, if you are not doing well in your horrific visions, don't worry about it too much. Horrific visions are new. They just got added into the game. Hell, there might be some buffs and nerfs coming for them in the next few weeks. But also, your character is going to be stronger as the expansion goes on. The raids, the dungeons, the PvP season hasn't even started yet, and we have a limited amount of gear to work with right now. So if you're finding yourself struggling with Horrific Visions, don't worry about it too much. As the expansion goes on, as the patch goes on, we'll get better gear in order to survive, we'll get better gear to kill things faster, we might be able to pick up a few tricks and more guides will come out for Horrific Visions to make them easier. You might even get a fat corruption piece of gear that will be able to blast through Horrific Visions very easily. And of course, we have the Heart of Azeroth upgrades that you will be able to work towards over time. For example, on PTR, when I first tried Horrific Visions, I went as a duo, so it was two of us. And we did the PTR testing, that means we had all of the various upgrades for Horrific Visions unlocked from the start. Off the bat, 
Horrific Legends back in PTR with everything unlocked, it was super easy to run through and do majority of the objectives. I say majority because we were able to easily do four out of five objectives, but for the most part, we were just kind of exploring and looking around. The idea for us to play PTR and test these visions out was just to dip our toes in to see what's it like, but we weren't really going to commit any specific time to really get good at them. But with all these upgrades, we're able to get four objectives very easily. We even had a couple times where we went down, but still were able to finish off the boss quite quickly. So if you're struggling with horrific visions as the patch goes on, it is going to be naturally easier as the player progression and player spikes and power do naturally happen. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys have an easy time with horrific visions and hopefully you found some of these tips and advices helpful. Thank you all, and I'll see all of you in another video.